Jonathan Taylor Thomas was the end-all and be-all of 90s teen idols. As the star of a popular sitcom and unforgettable movies, he was one of the biggest heartthrobs of all time. But then, as his star was about to go supernova, he stepped out of the spotlight. Thomas was born Jonathan Taylor Weiss on September 8, 1981 in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and shortly thereafter he moved to Sacramento, California, where he enjoyed an idyllic childhood full of outdoor adventures. As he told The Morning Call in 1996, I've always been this fly fishing nut. It's my favorite thing to do, to stand in a stream in the middle of nowhere and cast out my line. It wasn't long before this simple fishing nut turned into a major star. He moved to Los Angeles with his mom and brother, changed his last name to his brother's middle name of Thomas, and started booking roles. His first big part came in 1990 in the form of Kevin Brady on the Brady Bunch sequel series, The Bradys. That was followed by an infamous In Living Color sketch in which he played Macaulay Culkin, attempting to keep a nefarious Michael Jackson out of his home. In 1991, he landed a role of a lifetime as one of the sons on the ABC sitcom Home Improvement. He was only 10 when he started playing Randy Taylor, and his performance ensured that the mischievous yet good-natured middle child would be a fan favorite across America. Have you ever played Rocket Man? While Thomas loved his time on Home Improvement, being part of the Taylor family wasn't always a walk in the park. He starred in 179 episodes of the show over the course of seven years, often spending over nine and a half hours a day on set, while also managing a full school day's worth of studying and homework. He also somehow fit in time to hang out with friends, which was important to him. In 1996, he told Premiere Magazine, "...the industry is neurotic and weird, and so when I go home and I play basketball with my friends, I'm not Jonathan Taylor Thomas." I'm just Jonathan." He also spoke about the scheduling difficulties and mounting stress of fame in an interview with People magazine in 1994. As he put it, "...you have school, friends, learning your lines, and making sure your performance is up to speed. I can't tell you how many shows I've done with full-blown migraine headaches." One of Taylor's other iconic 90s roles was the young version of Simba in the classic 1994 animated Disney film The Lion King. Producer Don Hahn raved about Thomas to People magazine as he revealed, "...we looked at dozens and dozens of actors before choosing Jonathan, but we saw him on Home Improvement and just thought his voice was right. It gives him a very distinctive character." "...and this'll all be mine?" "...everything." "...everything the light touches." Taylor worked on The Lion King for two years, often shuttling between the recording studio and the home improvement set on the Disney Burbank lot. As the actor noted to People magazine, "...Simba's like me, real curious, fun-loving, always getting into mischief." Despite all those positive vibes, making the film wasn't exactly a walk in the park for Taylor. He spent long hours in front of the microphone to bring Simba to life. Everyone was so committed to the production that, as Han told People, "...we darn near beat him up when we were recording. We had to make it sound like he was being flung down chutes in the elephant graveyard and being chased by wildebeests, so we would rough him up at the microphone and try to make him out of breath." That sounds pretty intense for someone who was still a child. While Thomas loved acting, he hated the fame that came with it. He often spoke in interviews about how much he disliked all the attention and the intrusions into his personal life. He even hated appearing on so many magazine covers. In a 1998 interview with Conan O'Brien, he admitted that there were many parts of his life that he's thankful for, like his big fancy SUV. But he also noted that he was exhausted from being swarmed by fans. He recounted one instance in which a fan approached him for an autograph while he was lighting candles inside New York's St. Patrick's Cathedral, prompting him to ask the woman if they could step outside. And it wasn't just the intrusive questions and inappropriate encounters that bothered Thomas, as he also detested his JTT nickname. As he described it to O'Brien, "...I'm over that. I've always been over that." He was polite about it, but he made it clear that he preferred his actual name. In 1998, Thomas's maturity, future plans, and dislike of the spotlight finally outweighed his love of acting, as he left Home Improvement at the beginning of its eighth season. It was determined that Randy Taylor would take off on an environmental adventure to Costa Rica, thereby leaving Thomas free to join his friends at a private school in Los Angeles. He didn't even return to film the show's series finale in 1999, choosing instead to spend the time touring colleges on the East Coast, much to his co-star's disappointment. Patricia Richardson, who played his mom, spoke about Thomas's exit in a 1999 interview with TV Guide. She said, "...it's a pretty sore point around here. I think there were a lot of bad feelings all along. I don't think it's a good idea that he didn't show up." Even the normally jovial Tim Allen was upset, as he confessed, "...I was a little confused at why he didn't want to do this whole year. He said it was about going to school, but then he did some films. Did he want to do films? Did he want to go to school?" "...call when you get there." 
Call before you get there. <laughs> or I could open the emergency door and just yell out the plane. <laughs> Where does a child star go after he leaves the spotlight? In the case of Jonathan Taylor Thomas, it was off to college. And he didn't go to just any old school. In fact, he attended three elite universities. He started his scholastic journey at Harvard and then spent a year abroad at St. Andrews University in Scotland. He ultimately went on to graduate from Columbia University's School of General Studies in 2010 with an advanced degree. He talked about his college days in a 2013 interview with People magazine, as he noted, to sit in a big library amongst books and students, that was pretty cool. It was a novel experience for me. While Taylor was enjoying his time at school, he didn't exit Hollywood completely. He kept in touch with his showbiz connections throughout the late 90s and early 2000s, and he even revisited his previous cartoon voiceover success with a recurring role on The Wild Thornberries. Airing on Nickelodeon from 1998 to 2004, the show followed a family of wildlife documentary filmmakers. It was told from the point of view of Eliza, the younger daughter who happens to have the ability to talk to animals. Thomas had a six-episode arc during the show's third season in 2000. He played Eliza's cousin, Tyler Tucker. His first episode, entitled Tyler Tucker, I Presume, established that since Tyler and Eliza were close in age, they often butted heads with each other. Thomas's episodes also featured Tyler and Eliza competing with each other and causing complications for the entire family. Thomas didn't limit his TV guest appearances to cartoons, as he also popped up on hit shows like Smallville, Eight Simple Rules, and Veronica Mars. On Smallville, he played Ian Randall, a metahuman with the power to create copies of himself. He first appeared in 2002 on the ninth episode of season two, and then he revisited Ian the following season in the episode Asylum, which allowed him to show off both his acting chops and his toned torso. The ABC sitcom Eight Simple Rules featured Thomas in a three-episode arc in 2004 as Jeremy, a geeky young man who captures the attention of lead character Bridget, as played by Kaylee Cuoco while the two work on a science project. Then, in 2005, Thomas guest starred on one hour of the mystery drama Veronica Mars. It was the season one episode entitled Weapons of Class Destruction, in which he played a new student named Ben, whom Veronica suspects is responsible for a series of bomb threats. Jonathan Taylor Thomas's most memorable post-home improvement TV appearance was probably the time that he reunited with his home improvement co-stars on the Tim Allen starring sitcom Last Man Standing. He first guested on the show in a season two episode in 2013 and ultimately appeared in four episodes. He played John Baker, who worked at a fancy restaurant alongside the oldest daughter of Allen's character, Mike Baxter. The most notable moment of all these guest appearances occurred when John met Mike, thus allowing the two actors to joke about their previous on-screen father-son relationship. Relationship. Man, you look familiar. <laughs> Taylor's final Last Man Standing appearance was a season four episode in 2015 that also featured his former on-screen mom, Patricia Richardson, who played Helen Potts, a widow and Mike Baxter's new neighbor. She enjoyed loudly working with power tools, a nod to the famous neighbor character from Home Improvement. This time around, instead of playing John Baker once again, Taylor played Helen's son, Randy, thus doubling up the sense of how familiar he looked to Mike Baxter. A lot of actors eventually decide that they also want to work behind the scenes, and Jonathan Taylor Thomas is no exception. He's given directing a shot by helming three episodes of Last Man Standing, Season 3's Haunted House and Hard Ass Teacher, and Season 5's Eve's Band. It shouldn't come as too much of a surprise that Taylor decided to take a turn in the director's chair. He first gave fans a clue that he had such aspirations back in 1996 when he was just 13, as he told Premiere Magazine that he had dreams of becoming the next Ron Howard. Howard initially gained fame at a a young age by starring on such shows as The Andy Griffith Show and Happy Days and has since gone on to direct dozens of movies like Apollo 13 and Solo, A Star Wars Story. Thomas was even talking with his friends about his plans to direct. In 2012, his former home improvement brother Zachary Ty Bryan told Hollywood.com that he kept in touch with Thomas. As he noted, he was going to Columbia University, he finally graduated, he's back out here in LA and I think he's pursuing directing. Taylor's expanding ambitions don't stop at directing, he's also pursued producing and writing. In 2017, he was even elected to the SAG-AFTRA National Board, which represents around 160,000 entertainment workers across almost all screen-related fields. It's also been reported that he's working on a project with Zachary Ty Bryan and fellow former child star Macaulay Culkin. In a 2018 interview with Access, Bryan revealed that they were in talks to collaborate with Culkin and Bunny Ears, which is Culkin's lifestyle and humor brand that creates a 
range of content with the goal of enriching lives and prompting chuckles. In a 2016 Reddit AMA, Patricia Richardson described the project as, quote, a really wonderful pilot that is sort of R-rated. With all that he's accomplished in his life, Taylor doesn't regret leaving the spotlight. When he exited Home Improvement, he wanted to go to school, see the world, and try new things. And that's exactly what he did. Nowadays, he keeps a low profile as he has no social media accounts, at least none that are available to the public, anyway. In 2013, he told People magazine, I never took the fame too seriously. It was a great period in my life, but it doesn't define me. When I think back on the time, I look at it with a wink. I focus on the good moments I had, not that I was on a lot of magazine covers. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.